Dear small YouTubers, if you're not getting views, please stop doing these five things. Now, the first massive YouTube mistake is perfectly illustrated by my friend Ed. You know him as one of the biggest YouTube education channels around. But what you might not know is that Ed actually started his channel in 2017, worked on it for three years with very little success, and almost quit YouTube 30 days before his channel did this. Now, I'm not saying it's going to take you three years, but stories like this make you wonder how many small YouTubers are quitting three feet from goal. Now, I'm not saying that you should scream positive affirmations at your spirit crystal every morning, right? Never give up on your bathroom mirror and then just ignore reality. But I do have a practical mental model that's helped me personally avoid giving up when I felt demotivated without denying reality or just doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result because that's just insanity. And I shared this on a recent podcast. So the green dot theory is basically a similar concept created by a guy named Trent Dysmed. In essence, most of us get onto the platform we have this vision to create a certain type of content and those content they might be videos about like green dots so we get out there we create our channel we start making these green dot videos and they usually suck because that's just how things normally work a lot of people quit at that stage but a small percentage of creators as a result of creating those green dot videos you know they notice some things that are working most things aren't but they notice a couple of things that are working and so they, they investigate those things more and then they end up finding hey maybe i should try and create these other videos and those videos are blue dot videos. They recalibrate their channel. They stop creating green dot videos and they go out there and they start creating blue dot videos. They still suck, but they suck like mildly less because they've learned from their previous mistakes. And as a result of creating the, these blue dot videos, they then discover this other type of content, which, you know, might be red dot videos. And so they pivot their channel again and then the channel picks up a little bit more. And this process just keeps on continuing. Most of the time, your green dot videos or people watching this, if you haven't started YouTube and you've got this idea like for videos you want to create, chances are it's probably not going to work and you're going to fail and it's going to suck and you're going to be sad but that is going to lead to you maybe finding some little things or some clues as to what does work and then maybe you'll try that and maybe that'll work a little bit better and then maybe through that you'll do the same thing and that'll work a little bit better and so like for me when I started I had no desire or awareness of the fact that I would end up creating the videos that I ended up creating on my my first channel at the end that actually blew me up like literally wasn't even on my radar. I had no idea I was going to end up creating videos about how to grow on YouTube. Like none of it. I, like if you had told me that when I first started, I would have laughed in your face. <laughs> But the only reason that happened was a result of going through that process and creating those different pieces of content. So yeah, it's basically just like try and trust the journey. Now, continuing to evolve and not giving up is obviously important. But of course, it's not the only massive mistake small YouTubers make. And this next one is potentially one of the biggest that stops you from getting views when you don't have many subscribers. I call this technique trend surfing. As YouTubers, we go out there and we feel like we have to generate all this attention from scratch. Like we have to create all the attention for our own videos just based on an amazing title or an amazing thumbnail. But often there are events happening out there that have a lot of attention around them already. And if you could just integrate parts of that within your content, you can kind of poach some of that attention. Two things you want to think about though when you're trend surfing. First one is you don't want to sacrifice your channel or yourself for a trend. So like for me with my channel right now, I've got this Mr. Beast video that did really well. I could easily pump out a part two and a part three and it'd probably get millions of views. But I don't want to do that because I don't want my channel to become a Mr. Beast fan page because that's not going to be valuable long-term for my audience. While trends are very important and can help you get a lot of views, you really want to make sure that you're getting the right type of views and it's not going to be hurting you in the long run. And then the second thing is to think about timing. So I like to call it surfing because anyone who's ever been surfing would know that if you try and catch a wave, like literally just as it's like coming crashing down, you're probably going to get smashed and get caught up in all the whitewash and it's just not going to work. You want to try and catch the trend early on so that as it's rising up and getting a lot of attention, your video is the first one being pushed out there. And another thing a lot of people miss is that they see a trend and they just go and create a video on it. And they're like, well, why didn't it work? It's like, because there's 16 gazillion other videos on that exact same thing right now. If you had created that exact same video months ago, it probably would have blown up and might have got hundreds of thousands of views. Now, trends can help, but just because you jump on a good one and you're getting a lot of impressions and views doesn't mean your video is actually going to go viral because if people don't watch 
watch it and aren't satisfied with it, at some point your video is going to hit a ceiling, probably sooner rather than later. And so here's a massive mistake I see small YouTubers keep making that causes people to not watch their videos all the way to the end. They leave in too much filler content that's either like pauses between words or they don't cut early enough. Like if there's a laugh in the video, for example, instead of cutting like partway through the laugh to the next clip, they'll let the whole laugh play out for the full five seconds or something, whatever it is. Really just cutting out as much space or irrelevant content that doesn't really add to the video that if it wasn't in the video, it wouldn't be a negative thing. Cut as much of that as possible. Try and keep the video as visually stimulating as possible. And one of the simplest ways to do that is just to use punch ins uh, and punch outs, which is like zooming in 25 or 30% on the screen and zooming out. Usually you want to punch in to like emphasize a certain moment or something funny happened. And you'll see it in like on TV and stuff all the time. Notice like watch the screen. If they're showing a certain clip longer than seven seconds and they don't cut to like B-roll or something like that, often they'll either show a different camera angle or they'll just like zoom in on it a bit. It just changes the perspective up. And that's a really, really easy one you could do. Add punch ins at relevant times and it'll just make the video more engaging. Now, I hope you give that technique a try, but sometimes even if you've found a good trend and even if you're making great videos, you're still not going to get views, which is confusing and frustrating, but often it's because you're making this next big mistake. I think I was posting content where the, the supply and demand just wasn't a good balance. There was a huge amount of competition, a huge amount of big YouTubers posting exactly the same videos I was posting, probably like 10 times better than my videos. And so there was no reason for someone to come and watch mine. The major things that I did was I ended up shifting to a different type of content during that period where I blew up. It was a strategic decision, but it was also a little bit lucky in a sense that I'd picked a niche I was relatively good at and relatively comfortable and matched the kind of skill set that I'd built over that one year. And there were lots of people who wanted to watch that content at that time, but there were only five to 10 other proper creators actually like posting that content. So the supply and demand balance was a lot more in my favor. And so the video started getting served and started getting tens of thousands of views. And if your channel isn't growing after fixing all of these mistakes, chances are you're committing this next mistake. Please do sit through it because it can make or break your channel. I mean, people are probably going to hate me for saying this because it's so cliche and everyone says it and everyone knows it, but like, it's just so true. Thumbnails, they need to be good. Titles need to be good. Your intros need to be good. I think a lot of people make the mistake of thinking their titles and thumbnails and intros are good when they're really not. Oh! I don't know if this is necessarily true, but it sounds good, so I'll go with that. And that is, we share 98% of our genes with chimps. So it's the 2% that makes the difference. And I think that's very applicable when it comes to thumbnails and titles. You might be creating good thumbnails, but they might be seven out of 10s and it's still probably gonna do crap because there's other thumbnails out there that are 10 out of 10s. YouTube's almost like an all or nothing game. It's like a power law, it's an exponential curve when you get up to those high levels. So yeah, I thought I was creating good titles and thumbnails and they were good, but the problem was they weren't amazing and exceptional. But sometimes just talking about concepts like this can be a bit confusing. So if you'd like to see an example of all of this put into action, check out the video on screen where me and one of my students go through how he avoided these mistakes and monetized his YouTube channel in just 21 days.